Yes, okay, I realize I look ridiculous, coupled with the fact that these horribly tacky lights behind me that don't even look good, but they took so freaking long to put up and it was so extremely tedious that I refused to take them down. So they'll just sit there and continue to make me and the rest of the video look awful. Anyway, lately pretty much the only reason I turn on my Nintendo Switch is to throw in some Smash and have King K. Roll beat my butt online. But of course there are some exceptions to that. The Nintendo Switch has a huge library of games at this point. It would be foolish to limit myself to one title. So if you've been looking for some fun new games to play, here's what I've been playing on my Switch recently. And this video is sponsored by the sweater that Kim made me. It's my Christmas sweater that has my cat's face on it. Thanks, Kim. Okay, the fact that I'm still playing My Heroes 1's Justice, a fighting game, even with Smash Brothers being out, should definitely say something about the quality of this title. Obviously, this game is based on the My Hero Academia cartoon, and I know some people get offended when you call it a cartoon. I know it's anime, but obviously all of these kind of cartoon animes are just for kids. No one's supposed to take them seriously. They're just for children. It's the same with other kiddie shows like Dragon Ball and Naruto. You don't take it too seriously, but the games can be pretty fun. Be honest, though. How many of you got upset? <laughs> I am going to take off this shirt, though, because it's, it's like a size too small. Kim got it for me, and I think I shrunk it in the wash. Anyway, this game is based on the anime, and it even has a story mode that recreates the show. And while most of the story is given to you in comic book manga style, a lot of the cool parts of the anime are recreated with the in-game engine. And it actually does a really great job at recreating shot for shot some of the scenes from the show. You get to actually be in some of the coolest fights from the anime. And this actually surprised me a lot, because I kind of half expected this to be terrible. The gameplay I saw in the trailers made me think, wow, this could actually be good, but I was hesitant going into it because I'd played things like J-Stars, really hoping that was going to be fun, and it ended up just being a clunky, fumbling mess. And this game follows a very similar structure to that game, where it's not a traditional 2D fighter, rather you have free roam of the areas that it gives you to fight within. But it ended up being really great. I actually like it a lot, and it runs really well on Switch, albeit having some pretty long loading screens at times, but that's really the only drawback. The controls are really simple too, so so it's easy to pick up and just start playing, but with practice, you can get really good at it, especially when you really start to learn a character. And every character has a really cool moveset that embodies their persona from the show. Honestly, my favorite character is probably Tenya, which I didn't expect because he's one of my least favorites in the show. I don't hate him, I don't love him. He has this one move where he dashes back a little bit and then he lunges up and forwards and does a massive drop punt onto their heads and makes them bounce off the floor. It's just really cool to pull that off out of nowhere, especially when you're playing online and another character is charging straight to your face. What pow! I don't think so, buddy. Knee to the face. And the online can be a hit or miss, just like with most fighting games. I tried it out last night just to see where the current state of it was at. And initially I found myself getting into the same fight with the same guy like five times and he was very laggy. And then I had about 10 fights after that with about five or six different people and all of those fights played really well and I had zero complaints. So it can be a hit or miss, but if you're getting frustrated battling people online, then fortunately, there is a ton of offline modes. Like I said, there's story mode, there's also missions mode, there's also arcade mode, and then you can just have one-on-one -on -one offline battles, whether it's with the CPU or with friends. And I played this game with my friend Tyler over on our second channel, and he'd never seen the anime before, he'd never played the game before, and we had some of the most intense matches I have had in this game, and it was a lot of fun for both of us. I wouldn't be surprised if this goes down as a hidden gem, because I haven't seen anyone talking about it. It is on other systems as well, but the fact that it runs and plays so smooth on the Switch, it just makes me happy. Oh, and by the way, I'm gonna start leaving links to all the games I talk about down in my description. Especially for list videos like this, because I feel like by the time you get to the end of the video, maybe you forgot about the games in the middle of the video, so make sure you check out the description, because I'll, I'll link everything I talk about. Katamari Reroll released recently, and I felt like it got kind of swept under the rug because of the release of Smash Brothers. And don't be thinking, oh, well, that was a PS2 game. How fun can it be now in 2018? Almost 
2019, depending on when you're watching this. It actually holds up really well. Not only is it just really enjoyable to play, it's also weirdly calming. The game has a really weird story, where essentially this god character gets really drunk and destroys the entire universe. And this guy is your father, so now it's your responsibility. So you go around these worlds, starting with a tiny ball, and you slowly roll it over things, building it bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, until it's big enough that your father god character can take the ball, throw it up into the universe, and it becomes a star, effectively replacing the ones that he destroyed. And it starts with you picking up little everyday things, like thumbtacks and paper clips. And the more you roll over things and the bigger your ball becomes, the bigger things you can roll over. You can start rolling over things like mice and crabs and tapes and magnets. And as you get bigger and bigger and bigger, you'll eventually get to the point where you're rolling over freaking buildings. There is a size goal you have to hit in each level, as well as a time limit that sometimes if you don't hit, it can be frustrating. Especially when I find myself fighting the controls and the camera. This is a PS2 game, so that's the only part that I would say hasn't aged that well, and they didn't really go out of their way to fix it all that much. So while those things might frustrate you about 10% of the time, the other 90% of the time you'll find yourself on an absolute soothing joyride just rolling over things and trying to see how big a ball you can create. Certainly can be addicting, with every time you finish a level you want to dive back in to see how much bigger you can make the next ball. Oh and funny enough, this is another game I'll be playing through on my gameplay channel. Doing giveaways and stuff, daily content, if you want more me, that's the place to find it. <laughs> Overcooked 2. Now the reason this game made the list is because recently they released some DLC for it called Surf and Turf. Now I've never actually reviewed this game, I've recommended it before, but I always held off on actually talking about it because I wanted to make that video with Kim. Kim loves this game, it's one of her favorite Switch games. So I think what I'll do pretty soon is a video like my girlfriend's favorite Switch games or something like that, where we'll review all the games she really likes to play on Switch. But for now, I'll just briefly mention, yeah there's DLC, they've added new ingredients, new menu items, a whole new area to explore. It's all Bahama Mama feeling with board shorts and sunglasses. But also, as of like yesterday, at the time of filming this, they added more free Christmas DLC that will automatically update when you boot up this game next. So if you loved Overcooked 2, boot it back up. And speaking of Overcooked, I want to mention this one really quick. Not because I want to review it, not because I've been playing it. I mean, heck, Overcooked 2 is just so much better, I have no reason to go back to this one. The reason I want to talk about it is because I'm really bad at keeping the right games in the right cases. So every now and then I have a tradition where I sit down with all my games, I open them all up, I go through them, and I mix all the games back the way they're supposed to be. And as I'm going through, I opened up Overcooked to see what game might be in here, knowing that I haven't even opened it since I bought it, but I want to check and I found a $10 note. I've never even opened this game, why is there $10 in it? At the last Retropalooza I went to, a convention here in Texas, one of my very, very good friends and a sweet human being, Ant Dude, came up to me and said, Hey Wood, I'm trying to sell Overcooked. I was wondering if you had it for Switch yet. I said, No, I don't. Actually, I'm looking for it. He said, Oh, I'll just give it to you. I said, No, 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 Ant Dude. I can't just take that from you. I must give you money. He hands me the game. I hand him a 10. I say thank you, give him a hug, you know, the weekend goes out, we go our separate ways, and then yesterday I open it up and I find a 10. And I haven't even told him yet that I found it. This is, this will be when he finds out. So Ant Dude, you are a gorgeous human being, a fantastic content creator for YouTube. Everyone, please go and check out Ant Dude. Such a sweetheart, such a generous soul, such an amazing human being. Ant Dude, I miss you, I love you, and I can't wait to see you again, buddy. I was really excited for Moonlighter. I pegged it as my next Switch addiction. I thought it was going to be my new Dead Cells. I mean, just look at it. I wanted this in my game room, if nothing else, just for the artwork. And then I started playing it. Now, I immediately fell in love with the concept. I mean, I already kind of knew the concept, but actually getting your hands on it and playing it, everything just falls into place and it's such a great idea. But within an hour, I had put my Switch down and I didn't think I was gonna play it again. And in fact, I was very disappointed. And I'll tell you why I didn't like it in a second, but I'll go straight to the end of the story and tell you that I love it now. So here's what went wrong in my first hour and I do feel like it's poor game design in a way? I don't know, I flip flop on it, but let me just try and explain. It is insufferably difficult at the start of the game. It's 
so stupidly hard, and I'm not talking like Dark Souls hard, where any good player can walk into any battle armed with a twig and no armor and probably take down the thing. I mean it's hard in the sense of it's just borderline impossible. This game starts you with a shield and a tiny little sword that's like the size of a banana. Seriously, your range here is like a T-Rex arm that's about as far as you can swing and stab. And you're coming against this huge enemies with these massive swords that swipe down from massive distances and kill you in one hit. And you can't avoid these things because every room you walk into seals off the doors and you have to beat everything in that room before you progress. Every time I walked into this dungeon I couldn't get more than two rooms in without copping a sword or something in the face and dying immediately. The large enemies don't get pushed back or stunned by your attacks so the only way to attack them is to literally walk up to them and just swing in their face as fast as you can while they one hit combo you and die with no stun lock on them. And the little enemies are so small that your sword will probably miss them and they'll just like hit your feet a bunch until you die. And it doesn't help that the enemies seem to be able to move in any direction they want. They can go around in freaking circles, they can move diagonally, they can shoot diagonally, they can attack in any direction, but you can literally only attack straight on right, left, and behind you I guess. I mean you turn around, but you get my point. So the trick to beating most of the enemies is if they're like, let's say here and shooting that way, you gotta kind of walk up to them and attack forward and try and get them on the side swipe while their shots are going that way. So again, at the start when you're severely underpowered and you don't really know what you're doing yet, it's way more frustrating than fun constantly going into the dungeon and dying immediately. You're not making any progress and you feel like you're not making any progress. The saving grace actually comes outside the dungeon. Because there's a whole nother mechanic to this game that makes it stupidly fun. The title Moonlighter is actually the name of the store that you run. Every time you go into these dungeons and you actually manage to kill anything, it drops items that you bring back and then you actually sell those items at your own store. It's a really freaking cool idea. So during the day you'll open up your store, customers will come in, they'll buy the goo that an enemy dropped, they'll buy the tree bark, they'll buy whatever it is that you found, you'll make your money and then you'll use that money to upgrade the town, like buying a blacksmith. And then once you've bought the blacksmith, you go to the blacksmith and you can start buying new armor and new weapons. Now initially getting started, this takes forever. If I went back and started the game again, having a better know-how of how the game works, I could speed this up a lot quicker, but this game doesn't hold your hand, which in a way is great. I don't like having my hand held. It just would have been nice to kind of know what I was doing a little bit more at the start, so I didn't have to persevere with as many failed attempts in the dungeon. Now I can't recommend this enough out of all the items you probably want to get a large sword, because not only now can I actually attack most enemies from a distance, also you can hold down B and do an all around you link style swing and that move honestly feels OP compared to where you started the game. And that was the point where the game truly started exploding and I was able to make so much more progress in the dungeon and so much more money in my store. I would go into that dungeon and I would fill my backpack full with so many items I had to leave because I literally couldn't cram anything else into my pockets. I would open up my store for the day and jack up all my prices to the highest they could be without turning customers away, make as much money as I could and then I would grow my store to twice the size. I put in a better cash register which actually made people tip more so then I was making more money per sale. You could buy someone for the town that makes you potions. You can buy someone that brings cool items into the town. You can buy someone that will make cool things for your shop to attract more customers. You can put better beds into your rooms every morning you wake up with more HP. And all of that growing your actual store, getting more customers through the door, making a stupid amount of money from the things you're collecting. That is what became the most rewarding part of the game for me. Not so much the dungeon which was still really hard and I couldn't beat the Golem King. But it was this side of it that was getting addicting. Every time I went into the dungeon where all the combat and the action was, I kinda couldn't wait to get out of there and feed my addiction on growing my store and seeing what customers came through that day and what they bought. Then, when I finally figured out how I was gonna beat the Golem King, I stocked up on potions, I saved up enough to improve my armor and improve my weapons, and I went in there guns blazing, except I didn't have guns, and I actually took down the Golem King all of a sudden with ease. I was so excited I messaged Sean just to tell him I'd finally beaten the Golem King even though he had no idea what or who I was talking about. And it was at that point I realized, oh, now the combat is rewarding. I mean, I finally had that feeling in the combat of yes, I did it. Yes, I beat it. That moment 
I was thankful for how impossibly hard the game was at the start. I was thankful for the fact that I couldn't walk into a room without wanting to throw my Switch down and not play it anymore. Because I had come so freaking far. I honestly related to Breath of the Wild and walking out of that initial cave as Link with no clothes and a stick. And then eventually taking down Ganondorf. And that was all just in one dungeon. I have three more to go. Every time you take down a dungeon, you get a key. I have so many more weapons to unlock, so many more things to upgrade, so much more of the town left to build. From what I thought was one of the most disappointing and broken games I had ever played, it eventually became one of the most rewarding and satisfying games I had ever played. I would love to know what you guys have been playing on your Switch lately, so let me know that down below. And on your way down there, make sure you like this video and you have flip all over that subscribe button. Click or tap on this video right here because I'd really appreciate it. Check out the links to all the games I talked about today down below. And uh, everyone go bombard Andude on Twitter and YouTube. Tell him that I love him. I'd appreciate that too.